Hello friends. Today in this session we will discuss structural evaluation of rigid pavement using falling weight deflectometer as given in IRC 117 of 2014. This code covers three types of evaluation. Evaluation of subgrade modulus, elastic modulus of concrete and strength of pavement concrete. Now here you find subgrade modulus that is K value elastic modulus of concrete that is E and strength of pavement concrete that is modulus of rupture. Detection of wires underneath the rigid pavement and third evaluation is for load transfer efficiency of transverse joint as well as longitudinal joints. FWD method is used to estimate the in situ strength of concrete slab and the modulus of subgrade reaction and therefore evaluation means basically estimating the strength of the pavement concrete as well as the modulus of subgrade reaction so that the capacity of the pavement to withstand future traffic load that is balance life of the pavement can be determined using cumulative fatigue damage principle as laid down in IRC 58. And therefore it is important to understand here that this FWT data will not provide the residual life directly Rather, it provides strength of payment concrete and then this strength is used in, in the Excel sheet which are provided with IRC 58 to carry out cumulative fatigue damage analysis of the payment to determine the residual life. FWD is a vehicle mounted device which is used to load the payment dynamically and it simulates actual traffic load and loading conditions. Here a weight is dropped on a plate and this load creates deflection in the pavement and these deflections are measured at different radial distances to develop the complete deflection bowl of the pavement. And then this bowl is used to determine the strength of each layer of the pavement. The falling weight deflectometer has these characteristics. It can vary from the equipment to equipment. Load range is 10 to 240 kilonewton. Heavy load of 40 to 60 kN may be required for concrete pavement to get the reasonable amount of deflection. Load rise time approximately 13 millisecond. Load duration is approximately 26 millisecond. And it uses geophones to determine the deflection in the pavement. For a flexible pavement, reflection sensors are placed at 0, 300 mm, 450 mm, and up to 1800 mm. But in case of rigid pavements, only four geophones are used and these are at the center of the load, 300 millimeter away from the load, 600 millimeter and 900 millimeter away from the load. The first step for evaluation of a concrete pavement by FWD is to obtain the construction history of the pavement. That includes month and year of the construction, traffic which was considered at the payment design stage, thickness and strength of payment concrete, thickness and strength of dry line concrete subbase, CBR of subgrade soil, modulus of subgrade reaction considered in the design and what was the temperature differential for payment concrete which was taken at the time of design. Now here traffic data should be collected as its characteristics may change after the completion of the project. And this traffic data must be collected through Excel load survey as well as traffic count only for commercial vehicles for single Excel, tandem Excel and tridem Excel. Excel load survey may be conducted for 48 hours covering a minimum sample size of 10% in both directions as suggested in IRC 58. And then these data may be tabulated like this for single Excel load, for tandem Excel load and for tridem Excel load. For single axle load, the class interval can be taken as 10 kN, for tandem axle load is 20 kN and for tridem axle load, this class interval can be 30 kN. These are suggestions given in IRC 58 also. The buses and light vehicles like pickups will not contribute to fatigue damage and therefore their count is generally ignored in the analysis. Now, for the evaluation of a concrete payment, the first step is to, to carry out the payment condition survey. 
Now, payment condition survey of the entire project length should be done before actual deflection test. And IRC suggests a format to collect the data. It will consist of the visual observations of cracking and faulting of the road. So here it is a change at the panel number. What is the size of the panel? Shoulder composition and condition. Riding quality like speed and quality in terms of good, fair, poor or very poor. And similarly payment conditions. Track, uh, transverse crack less than 1.5 meter in length. Transverse crack more than 1.5 meter in length. And similarly longitudinal cracks. Full depth, porthole and all these parameters are collected during payment condition survey. And then you decide the location for conducting FWT test. FWD data may be collected at interiors, corners, transverse joints and longitudinal joints in the outer lane at interval of 500 meter. Heavy loads travel mostly in outer lanes and very often greater distresses also are found in the outer lane. But if there are distresses in the inner lane also, then FWD test should be conducted in those lanes also. And the loading conditions or loading positions which are critical for a rigid payment are given here is the central loading or you can say interior loading. This is the corner loading, edge loading on longitudinal side and transverse side. And this is for a slab. This is the out, outer lane, this is the inner lane, this is the median in case of a four lane highway and the shoulder. So test should be conducted at the interior position as well as at corner and edge position. Single lane roads are usually provided on low volume roads and therefore FWD tests on such payments are not necessary. But for two lane, two lane, two way roads, both lanes have to be tested for corner, edge, interior, transverse and longitudinal joint loading. Spacing for test can be lower depending upon the condition of the payment, otherwise it can be 500 meter. Now for the evaluation of the modulus of subgrade reaction as well as the strength of payment concrete, it is necessary that the test be carried out at the interior when the temperature gradient is zero or negative. That means when top surface is cooler than the bottom and the central portion of the payment slab is in full contact with the foundation. During daytime, the surface is hotter than the bottom and the slab will curl up forming the convex surface like this with the raised central region and the test in the raised part will show high deflection values. The edges will be resting on the foundation in this case. Similarly, edges will get raised during the night and test at edge will give large deflections and these factors should be considered while carrying out the test. For two lane roads without concrete shoulder, test should be carried out at the corner, interior and edge positions. And when there is are no double bars, test at the transverse joint should be carried out in the morning hours to determine the low transfer due to aggregate interlock when the joint opening will be higher because of contraction of slabs at lower temperatures. Then surface temperature measurement is another parameter. Ideally, the payment temperature should be recorded directly from the temperature holes at each test location as FWD test is being performed. But this is not a practical approach, particularly when number of tests are to be conducted are very large. When you go for the production level or network level or maintenance level measurement of FWD data, therefore the, for production level testing, the economic and practical approach is by measuring the surface temperature at each test location using infrared thermometer. There are FWDs which can automatically measure and record the payment surface temperature to the FWD file. But if the FWD is not equipped with an infrared thermometer, then the FWD operator can use a handheld thermometer and record the temperature to a file. Now the step-by-step -step procedure for evaluation process is like this. The first step is carry out FWD test 
and record the deflection at 0 mm, 300 mm, 600 mm and 900 mm radial distances from the center of loading point. Then, then calculate the area parameter A of deflection basin and this can be calculated using this equation. A is 6 times 1 plus 2 D1 upon D0 plus 2 times D2 upon D0 plus D3 upon D0. Whereas D0 is deflection at the center of the loading plate. D1, D2, D3, these are the deflections at 300 millimeter, 600 millimeter and 900 millimeter from the center of the loading plate respectively. For extremely rigid layer with a high elastic modulus, all these deflection values D0, D1, D2, D3 will be almost same and value of A in that case will be 36. But in a practical case, when you are conducting this test on a normal rigid payment or concrete payment, this value of A is less than 36. Then third step is determine the radius of relative stiffness L from the deflection basis area. Now when you are when you have the value of deflection basin area A, then you can calculate value of L, that radius of relative stiffness. And for this, there are charts available in ASTO 1993 guide. IRC 1171 provides Excel sheet to directly calculate relative stiffness uh, of the concrete using the values of D0, D1, D2, D3 and a. After finding the radius of relative stiffness, normalized deflection values are calculated and this also can be done either using charts which are given in ASTO code or using Excel sheets which is provided along with this IRC code. Then fifth step is to determine the subgrade modulus K for different normalized deflections using the following equation that Ki is equal to P into Di upon L square into Di. I 1, 2, 3, 4 that is these are four positions of the deflections and L is the radius of relative stiffness, P is the load in kilo Newton and Di is the measured deflection in millimeter at various radial distances. And this is the normalized deflection millimeter at various radial distances. And this di is calculated using Excel sheet and this ki value is also calculated using Excel sheet. I will come to that sheet little later. Now once you know that, you get the k value of the subgrade modulus. Now what the code suggests that K value for payment design should be 50% of that determined by FWD since only static modulus of subgrade reaction is to be used for payment design. So whatever value you get from here, 50% of that should be taken as the design value of K. Then sixth step is to determine the elastic modulus of concrete that is EC. And this is the equation used in the Excel sheet to determine EC. Here mu C is the Poisson ratio of concrete, K modulus of grid reaction which you determined earlier, L radius of relative stiffness in millimeter and H is the thickness of the concrete slab. So using this equation you can calculate what is elastic modulus of concrete EC. Once you know EC then you can calculate the strength of concrete using this equation that the cube strength is EC upon 5000 whole square and the modulus of rupture or fissure strength can be calculated using this FC value that is a well known equation that the fissure strength is 0.7 square root of FCK. So FC is calculated from here so you can find out what is the modulus of rupture. Now let us take one example here just to illustrate the procedure of determining the modulus of rupture of the concrete. Say the example is to evaluate the subgrade modulus, elastic modulus of concrete and strength of pavement concrete. That is your K value, E value and MR value. So you conduct the, the FWD test on a concrete road 
using these are the parameters let us say the radius of loading plate 150 millimeter apply a load of 50 kilo newton Poisson ratio of concrete can be taken as 0 0.15 Poisson ratio of subgrade can be taken 0.45 and thickness of concrete slab let us say 300 millimeter and you drop this load of 50 kilo newton and measure the deflections at 0, 300 millimeter, 600 millimeter and 900 millimeter from the center of the load and these are the values. Now with these values, you move to Excel sheet and then find out the strength parameters of the concrete. So let us now go to the Excel sheet. This is the Excel sheet which is provided with IRC 117 and this Excel sheet, these are the input data for Excel sheet radius of loading plate that is 150 millimeter, load 50 kilo newton, Poisson ratio of concrete 0 0.15, Poisson ratio of subgrade 0 0.45 and thickness of concrete slab we have taken an example is 300 millimeter. And these are deflected, these are deflection values which are measured after conducting FWD test. So D0, D1, D2 and D3 and these are all in millimeter. Now, once you provide these values, it will calculate area of deflection basis, basin, that is A, and radius of relative stiffness, 1074 millimeter, and these are the normalized values of deflections, D0, D1, D2, and D3. And using these normalized value, it calculate the modulus of subgrade rejection K in MPA per meter, 86.923. Half of this is taken for calculation of elastic modulus and elastic modulus is also calculated here 25170.341 MPA and using this value you calculate FCK and that is 25.34 MPA. So very simple Excel sheet is provided with IRC 117 to calculate all parameters like L, K, EC, FCK and from FCK you can calculate FMR. So the results which you get from Excel sheet are like this that modulus of reduction 86.923 MPA per meter and we take 50% of this as a design value that is 43.46. Lastly modulus of concrete you get 25,170 MPA and this gives you the cubic strength of the concrete that is FC 25.34. And if you use this equation, you get FMR or flexural strength that is 0.7 square root of this value, 3.52 MPA. So that is the modulus of rupture. Now using this modulus of rupture, then you carry out fatigue analysis of the concrete pavement. Use fatigue equations as given in IRC 58 to evaluate the fatigue life of the pavement using this computed value of MR and K. And the payment should be checked for cumulative bottom up and top down fatigue analysis. For BUC, that is bottom up cracking, pleasure stress at the edge due to combined action of single or tandem rear axle load and positive temperature gradient is considered. And similarly, for top down cracking, damage caused by repeated cycle of axle loads and negative temperature differential is considered. The flexural stress is divided by the design flexural stress that is MR value of the concrete to obtain the stress ratio and this complete procedure is given in IRC 58 and you can watch my video on design of concrete pavement to understand this cumulative fatigue damage analysis of a concrete pavement. Now once you know this SR value or stress ratio then there is a relationship between the number of cycles to be taken or the fatigue life N and SR. If SR is less than 0.45, the payment can take infinite number of repeated stresses. If this value of SR is between 0.45 and 0.55, then N, the fatigue life is calculated using this equation. And if it is more than 0.55, then fatigue life is considered using this equation. The Excel sheet given in IRC 58 can be used for the evaluation of fatigue life consumed till the date of the test and the remaining life of the payment can easily be 
estimated. Another important characteristic of the payment that can be determined using FWD is the detection of wires underneath the rigid payment. Detection of wires below a payment slab can be done by FWD. Even GPR can be used to determine the wires in the payment, but the, the result of GPR are generally not very precise. And GPR can only give you the idea about the location where the wires in the payment are likely to be there. And in FWD, when deflections are measured along the wheel path and you make a plot of central deflection versus distance, then it looks like this. And location where the deflection are much higher than the normal may indicate the presence of wires. And these wires must be grouted with the cement mortar slurry to make the payment safe. IRC 117 provides some method of grouting the wires in a rigid payment. The next one is evaluation of load transfer efficiency of joints, LTE. It can also be determined or it can also be evaluated using FWD. Transfers as well as longitudinal joints deteriorate with traffic due to continuous loading. And the proper load transfer at joints has to be maintained for a good functioning of the payment. For a new payment, the joint efficiency is nearly 100%. Since the deflections on either side of the joint under a wheel load are almost equal. But this ratio decreases as the joints deteriorate under repeated loading. Now, if you take D1 and D2 as the deflection on the loaded and unloaded side of the slab, then this load transfer efficiency LTE is D2 upon D1. Now, this load transfer efficiency can be determined using FWD, and that is how the loading plate should be positioned close to longitudinal joint near the shoulder of a four lane highway and you estimate the deflection on the loaded side and unloaded side so on the loaded side if you have let's say deflection d1 and on unloaded side you have deflection d2 then this d2 upon d1 is the load transfer efficiency for a new payment D1 should be equal to D2 and D2 becomes less and less as joints deteriorate. Now what IRC suggests that if this ratio is less than 0.5 in case of transfer joints, then it is a critical condition. And in case of longitudinal joint, if D2 upon D1 is less than 0.4, then the joint is in critical condition. And therefore, if these conditions and therefore, if these conditions are reached, then retrofitting of dowels and tie bars are recommended as prescribed in IRC SP83. So friends, thank you very much for watching this video. If you have a suggestion, question, you can write in the comment box.